if your city has too much traffic yes slums yes overcrowding yes unplanned growth yes then congratulations huh? you are living in a good city what because if it does not have these things you are in trouble uh what how is too much traffic good too much traffic is definitely not good for one thing my blood pressure stop getting worked up about traffic okay first of all remember you are the traffic okay he's right there is a funny joke which says that oh nobody goes to that restaurant anymore it is too crowded <laughs> do you see the joke there yeah right if nobody goes to the restaurant then how is it crowded and Correct. if it is crowded then everybody yeah. goes to the restaurant yeah. to put it differently and bring it back to point yeah if you don't want traffic go live in my village there is no traffic there okay i can guarantee you that your commute will be very less right why is nobody moving there because it's a village and i don't think the places i want to work for necessarily have offices in those locations yes that is the point the reason your city has traffic is because it has all the good stuff and all the people in that city want to go to all those good places right they so don't like it when you make sense in these things let me tell you about a fascinating thing called marchetti's constant okay okay marchetti's constant says that no matter what you do hmm. the average commute in your city will be 1 hour 30 minutes each way wait what okay. yes no matter how much you improve the roads and the methods of transportation and whatever mm -hmm. the average commute will be 30 plus 30 minutes this is true of boston this is true of riyadh this is true of lisbon london it is true 100 years ago it is true today and it is claimed that it was true 10000 years ago the stone age okay that might have been an exaggeration but no, then again the way they figured this hmm. was they looked at the settlements of those periods hmm. and the distances to nearest water nearest place for hunting nearest place for fruits and nuts and they figured that these people are in like within a few kilometers of each other and roughly they are spending an hour walking to get these things okay 30 minutes marchetti is constant no i can tell you why this is true okay hmm. the logic hmm. because if you fix traffic you hmm. magically make all the roads wider and all of that hmm. you know it's not that your commute will go down to 10 minutes it is just that either you will travel longer find an even more interesting job which is 30 minutes away yeah or more people will move into this city and until will... the traffic increases right yeah and uh, i just realized that over a period of time marchetti's constant has remained true for me because i used to travel 30 minutes to go to university mm -hmm. and i still traveled 30 minutes when i joined my job and even when i moved houses i moved in such a way that the commute was 30 minutes yeah and so, before you people object in the comments let me clarify this is an average there will always be some people who are willing to commute 1 hour 1 and 1/2 hours and there will always be some people who are like 10 minutes away from work yeah. but if you take an average across the city it remains constant, constant right even minutes. though things change even though traffic changes pattern changes what work people are doing changes this remains constant okay so marchetti is constant explains the traffic situations but you also mentioned slums and them being good for a city no 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 i said slums will always be there okay, okay? if a city doesn't have slums you are in trouble because it means the city is dead there is no future and all the people who would normally be living in a slum there have moved to a different city okay, okay. and in slums in that different yes. city okay here is a thought experiment right okay what would happen hmm. if i magically provide decent housing to all slum dwellers in a city will the city and those people live happily ever after they should right no more new people will move in and create new slums okay okay the only solution ha huh. is to prohibit slums sounds uh... yeah this is a terrible idea because it is reducing the growth of a city or slowing it down right because whenever there is a city which has lots of opportunity there mm. will always be poor people wanting to move in okay and no city has enough infrastructure mm. that it can provide rapid quick cheap housing to all the poor people that are coming in right, right. either you have to wait 
because well you know there has to be a water connection and house and this and that electricity gas all everything. of those yeah. or you let them come in a slum where all of these things happen informally and in jugad mm. and then slowly these people get better and they move into housing right, right. so there is a un habitat report mm. which points out that slums are the first stop for most poor migrants and the services and commercial activities that informally spring up in a slum hmm. are the ones that the formal sector is either not able to provide at all or cannot provide at a cost that can be affordable to these people right hmm. cities can't really survive without them fair i get what you're trying to say but the thing that most people don't like about slums is that they make the cities look shabby that's a rich people problem okay fair again but you can't say that people living in the slums are happy living in those slums okay let me ask this question okay have you seen the cops at the bus stations and the train stations preventing people from going from slums to villages no 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 what no what that means people are in the slums by choice Right? Yeah, but is it a choice they are free to make though? They are free to make. The reason they are in the slums is because the alternative being in the village is even worse. Okay? I agree this is a problem that we should be trying to fix. This is a problem of the country not having enough resources hmm. for everybody and in fact the whole world. But this is different from what we are talking about in this episode. In this episode we are pointing out that given the current situation being in the slum with all those problems is still better than being in the village is it is it really better though because what is it about a village that you don't have that you have in a slum my friend works with villages hmm. he points out that in villages people die because there is no or little medical care yeah. of things that would not be a problem at all hmm. in hmm. a city okay yeah. there isn't much to do other than agriculture and even that is like a pretty tough and not very rewarding work right the boys in villages can't get married because the girls don't want to stay there yeah. and there is nothing much to do other than to watch sas bahu serials right the village people also typically racist sexist bigoted there's just okay so cities are better but can't they be planned better please like why do why does every big city devolve into chaos yeah so i get this point hmm. and indian cities are especially badly planned one especially important point i want to make hmm. is that even the best cities are unplanned okay fully planned cities are a very bad idea Okay What? there is a book called Seeing Like a State you should read that or at least read a summary okay where James Scott points out that fully planned cities like Brasilia or Chandigarh suffer from a serious problem which is that the planners don't really know how the future is going to unfold what people want mm. uh, right so Dharavi the slum it has thousands of small enterprises from leather to recycling mm. and this could never have been planned because there are all kinds of informal networks of suppliers and services and you know yeah. there is forget planning it there is nobody who even understands that system right now but it works very well yeah. there have been multiple attempts at cleaning up the whole thing and replacing it with a planned thing and they failed because nobody understands that whole complex beast right yeah. and this is true at a city scale yeah. right things have to evolve from the bottom up that is the only way that you can truly understand what people want and how strengths of this city are evolving compared to other cities and so on right hmm. chandigarh brasilia these were planned they ran into issues like the rigid zoning they said oh this will be residential and this will be uh, commercial whatever, right? and what not financial right that just results in everybody having to commute too much and then the traffic not being able to handle it especially when you plan it thinking of two wheelers and suddenly everybody has cars yeah. and so on right there is imposed uniformity that oh all the buildings will be similar to each other and people hate that people want their 
thing to be their thing, right? Yeah. Somebody wants a big house, somebody wants a small house, right? Yeah. There is a cultural disconnect because, you know, communal spaces like Jaipur, Varanasi with winding streets and public squares, those are much more vibrant than a thing with wide avenues and tree-lined streets and nobody walking on those streets, right? Yeah, I mean, you want a mix of both in the same yeah. location. In fact, that's what has happened with say, Chandigarh, right? Mm. It started off as being planned. At some point, they gave up and now the unplanned stuff is taking over. And that's good. Are you saying we just resign ourselves to living in a large city no matter how bad it is? There must be some good city in the yeah, world, yeah. right? So there are some things you can look out for. Okay. okay? So for example, pollution. Okay. Mm. To some extent, if a city is vibrant and if it is growing and all that, there is going to be pollution. Yeah. Any good city will have more pollution than a village. Yes. But Indian cities have way too much pollution yeah. and other cities in the world have shown that it is possible to be a big thriving city but still have reasonably low levels of pollution, right? Yes. So we do need to keep pushing our officials to find ways to reduce pollution and we do need to not stay in Delhi. Okay? <laughs> yeah, and uh, if you want a scientific reason for that, we have an episode titled Pollution Makes You Dumb. Yeah. Yes, it actually affects your IQ. Yeah. Another important thing to look for in a good city hmm. is good public transport, right? Yes. The more public transport there is, the more people are able to travel with fewer vehicles. Aha! Less cars, less traffic. Not true. Marchet is constant is still true. But what it means hmm. is for the same streets, same infrastructure, more people can travel. Yeah. You can get more commerce done, right? So that city will have a better productivity for a given infrastructure, right? That's true. That is very true. You are not doing that to reduce traffic. Mm. You are doing it to increase the efficiency of your city, right? Yeah. A third thing mm. to look at is a concept of producer city versus consumer city. Okay. okay. There is a lot of research on this. I'm not going to get into that. Mm. But basic idea mm. is that there are two kinds of big rich cities. Okay. okay. A producer city is growing and big and rich because it is producing something valuable, right? It is manufacturing something or it is creating software. So Bangalore, Mumbai, Pune, Ahmedabad are examples of producer cities. Okay. Mm -hmm. A city is a consumer city mm -hmm. if it is rich because either it has some raw material or some resource like oil mm -hmm. that it is just selling to somebody else mm. or it is rich and important because it has managed to capture political power it is like the administrative capital uh, Washington DC like Delhi and right. Geneva and well, no Delhi is both yeah Delhi is actually is both, both. yeah say Chandigarh is primarily government Jaipur mm. is primarily tourism right mm. so those are more consumer cities ah so okay go for producer cities go for produce why go for producer cities and why not go for consumer cities well the so, research says hmm. that producer cities are more vibrant will continue to grow they have good future prospects whereas consumer cities can survive for a while but their long term prospects are dwindling hmm basically real estate tip for you invest in pune real estate <laughs> But what he says does make sense uh, and we are seeing consumer cities like the oil states that he mentioned turn into kind of producer cities where they are inviting, uh, where they are creating tourism as sort of a uh, production material of sorts. But yeah, that's another topic for another day. Interesting. So large cities are not necessarily as bad as we think they are and the fact that they are large uh, might cause problems for people living in it but with those problems or within those problems are also hidden very important um, opportunities within every problem is an opportunity there we go Srikanth Naveen an opportunity for you to learn via future IQ and if you like this episode check out our episode on opportunity costs <laughs>